Hey guys, today is Friday the 13th, April 13th, 2012. We're taking a look at the ES Futures right now, which is about 30 minutes before the bell on Friday. And what I've got on, on here already is that head and shoulder I was talking about last week. And basically, that, that played out pretty well. Um, and I know we were talking about a, a minimum target. And if you take the head of the shoulder here and you bring it to where the neckline is, and we can just kind of duplicate that line. The break of the neckline was right, I don't know, we just say right in here. That'd have to be perfect. But you can see we came down and found it right there around 1356. We did find some support. We bounced off this. So this is the minimum, you know, this, this head measurement from the head to the neckline and the neckline down from the break. That is the minimum target for a head and shoulders. This is all textbook kind of uh, theory. But one thing to notice here is the neckline is actually sloping up. And when the neckline slopes up, that tends to mean it tends to mean that it's going to fall farther than the minimum. So you can see what we have what we're having now is we kind of pulled down, we're getting sort of this relief rally, and then we're selling off on Friday. So my theory is that you know we're probably going to go another leg lower. And if we bring in some fibs, um, you know, a couple downside targets that I, I would be kind of looking at potentially to get along is this is this is our impulse leg down. Okay. Basically pulling up to a 50% retracement of this leg down. So, you know, we we obviously might test the, the lows at 1350. But then if we do break those, I would expect to move to around 1334. Uh, you know, probably 1340. This is gonna be 134 SPY. So and that would coincide uh, relatively well with this pivot here. So I think that's probably where we're headed and it's probably going to happen next next week. And part of the reason why I'm thinking that is if you look at the dollar, dollar has sort of uh, rallied. And I'm going to bring in some um, my average true range bands. And you can see that, you know, we, we kind of in this downtrend, we found some support. This is about the 200 day moving average. Um, you know, I'm not going to muddy up the, uh, chart too much but you can see we, we broke back up found resistance at the upper band we pulled back we actually pulled back you know a little farther than I thought um, but again you know in Fibonacci uh, world let's see if I can draw this there we go um, we pulled back had a 618 to previous support this is you know this is a good golden ratio trade I don't actually trade the UUP uh, the dollar index because I don't think the options are that great but it is good for tracking so you know, as soon as we, we got to the 618, I, I, you know, I've been saying to my members, I think that you know, we're consolidating here, and then I think we're going to make a leg higher. And that's kind of what's happening. I didn't think we were going to dip down to the 618. I thought the, the 50 would hold. But regardless, this is kind of what helped this uh, yesterday's uh, surge in the market. You can see uh, the dollar is back up. I think we're going to retest these highs and potentially make a new high uh, over the next few weeks. And that's going to put some pressure on, on stocks. So... Um, let's look at a couple new trades that I'm looking at. And, um, one thing that I like here is Aetna. And if I just, I'm going to just bring in the moving averages here. You can see that first of all, we had a, we had a, you know, we're pulled back to the 20 day moving average. This is actually holding up pretty well, kind of some bullish consolidation here. But again, this is a nice, uh, if we, if we measure the move with Fibonacci, we've had a 618 retracement. And, you know, our members have, uh, we have a golden ratio trade video series. So if you guys are interested in getting the rules for, you know, why this would be a good long trade, um, I do think I might get long in this. I'm going to, I want to wait till early next week because if the market pulls back a little more, we might be able to get a little better entry, but this is looking good as a golden ratio trade. And if you'd like the rules, uh, you know, go ahead and take our free trial on our website and you'll get this complete video series for this trade setup. And I think... For anyone that's interested in Fibonacci's, this is really going to kind of help you out with 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 uh, Fibonacci retracements. And we focus on this video series in the 618. So uh, go ahead and start that trial um, and you can give us an email and, and we'll help you out with that. So I like Edna to the long side. I think our first target here is going to be 49. But again, I'm kind of waiting to see early next week um, what happens. And hopefully the dollar keeps going higher. Um, I think, you know, you also have this kind of support. Uh, trend breakout here and remember this surge was on the news when uh, when the Supreme Court was sort of 
discussing uh, the the healthcare law, and you know the the there was a lot of negative comments saying that they may strike it down. So apparently, healthcare stocks like this, and they surge on that news. But but you know, I told my subscribers about um, you know wait for the pullback. You got to wait for the, you can't buy into this, and that was exactly the right call. Waiting for the pullback, looking for a trade entry, and we do have a trade entry here. So. Um, I think Aetna AET is one of the better names in the healthcare space. So I think, you know, if you're looking for something on the long side next week, uh, this is something you might want to consider. Another one to the long side I like is Amazon. And last week I actually talked about Amazon in in last week's video. And, you know, I was talking about how it was consolidating above the 200. And I was kind of looking for a pullback to the 20 um, because that's where the, it broke out of this kind of larger uh symmetrical triangles uh pattern and basically we broke through but we found support at the 50-day moving average that's this blue line and we're kind of sitting here so what i would actually look to do uh, is because volatility has increased a little bit um i would actually look to possibly sell put put spreads a put credit spread underneath this you know if we can get to the bottom here you know maybe sell the 184 well, these are five shares. So maybe you sell the 180 or maybe the 185 if you want to, you know, look for a bounce up and 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 get out quickly. But um, I think selling put spreads on put spreads on Amazon makes sense here. Um, so on the short side, though, last week we talked about Oracle, and I talked about how last Friday we took a position in our service. And um, if we just kind of look at the trade setup, let me get all the this the stuff out here. So. Sometimes I just like to look at clean price action. So you can see this was the earnings pop. Uh, we sold off. I had sold a put spread here. Uh, made a, I didn't actually make that much money on that. I, I kind of got out around in here, so I made a few percent, but it was nothing major. But but what I noticed in Oracle was you know you had these moving averages, um, and I'm going to bring in the the squeeze here as well because this kind of plays a part. You kind of have this moving average as we were bouncing in between. You're bouncing between the 50-day moving average and the 20-day moving average. And then what you also had is in the TTM squeeze indicator, uh, which is something I use a lot for options. And you can see we entered this squeeze where these little green dots turned to red. And um, so, and we were kind of holding this resistance just under this 200-day this moving average. And so, again, if we look at, um, if I bring Fibonacci's in here, and we had this impulse leg, okay, and we kind of were kind of holding at the 382, you had moving averages, you had the squeeze, and we took a position last Friday, so it was one, two, three, four, th I think this was the day, we actually took the trade here, Oracle hit our first target on Tuesday, um, and we are, we sold half, we made a 37% gain, these are May options. I'm, I'm still looking for this to go lower, potentially to 28 and possibly even to the uh, 618 uh, extension. And that would be that would be a great trade if we can get down to 27. I might take a little more off the table around 28 because you're going to have some, some previous support resistance here. So uh, regardless, though, you can see how the squeeze indicator, when you combine Fibonacci moving averages and a squeeze that's firing short, you can see how this is a great trade setup, low risk. Uh, because we would take uh, stops up here around the 50 or the 618. So, um, again, in our service, if you guys are interested in learning about the squeeze, we have a great video tutorial on how this indicator works, and this is all free during the 14-day uh, trial. So, um, one other thing I want to look at um, is silver. And actually, I want to look at silver and apple. So, let, let's look at silver real quick. Um, and again, let me let me clear some of this stuff off for you guys. So silver is actually in a short squeeze now. This thing is looking to fire short. You can see that we've kind of consolidating up. You got this little fake out here, consolidating in the moving averages. Um, I actually sold, I'm in actually two positions here. I have some I have some puts, but I also have a 32, 34 call spread that expires next week. So as long as um, uh, silver SLV stays below uh, 32, that will expire worthless. So I'll make a nice percent there, but also, Got some directional puts, taking a little heat on that because I actually started accumulating the position. As soon as the squeeze started, I started accumulating puts on this day. Lost some money and now I'm pretty much back to even, but I still think this is going to fire short. 
And again, this all has to do with the dollar rally. The dollar is up, you know, the dollar is up, you know, three quarter percent today. And yesterday it was down. So you can see this down day, up day, and you look at silver, and this is this is true for gold and some other stuff. Yesterday was up and today is down. So the dollar is dictating what's happening, especially in commodities and equities. So that's something we're in. Another thing we've been tracking the last few weeks that I'm still in is the um, April 645, 650 bear call spread. And when you're trading stock options, um, it's you know, call spreads are great because you don't have to be directionally right. You know, I would never simply buy puts on Apple for swing trades because Apple can just, you know, rip higher for no reason. But you look at this downside you're starting to get. You're getting a little bit of a break of the 20. So I'm looking for these things to expire worthless next week. And again, this is a nice bear call spread as well. So um, I think that's all I want to cover today. Uh, if you guys have any questions about any of these indicators or Fibonacci's, uh, please feel free to give us an email or definitely start our free trial. It's a 14 day trial and you get all the videos for that training too. So you guys have a great weekend and be safe.